sweet josh thanks for coming on man it's a pleasure man thank you this is a i know it was like super last second but i'm glad that i got you on here and i look forward to i thought this would be cool like for us because like we like we have a lot of mutual friends but we haven't spent too much time with each other yeah for sure so this is going to be great we're gonna be like open books to i'm each all other. about it man sweet <laughs> let's do this love it so you've been you moved to nashville where did you move from um so i was in virginia beach for seven years um doing the navy thing and then I moved here right after I got out, like within a couple of days. Nice. Um, so I moved from there to here and I basically didn't know anyone. And then yeah. Josh was pretty much my first friend, Josh Barker. So, oh, okay. And then he just kind of like spread my little wings to the whole group of right. everybody. So yeah, that's cool. cool. Yeah. How did you and Josh meet? So I actually met through a girl who was visiting here and I think they're all on Broadway and they met like everyone like Dalton and Josh and all these people. And then she had mentioned that, I was trying to do music at the time. I was like songwriting and stuff uh, for a yeah. few years. And then somehow like she just gave him my name cause he do, does the producing stuff. So, yeah. um, about a year and a half later I was here. I had been here for about six months and I was like, I kind of want to put a song out. So I just DM Josh. I was like, Hey, do you remember me? He goes, yeah, absolutely. So, and then nice. he ended up living like five miles from me. That's right. So, he yeah. did. He did your first thing right? yeah, yeah. that you put out. Yeah. That's cool. That's been, how long has that been now? So that came out on the first on like New Year's. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Man, time, I feel like this year is like it's so fast flying by. I don't know what what's going on, but Jesus. Well, especially like everything's opening up, so it's like it's getting wild. Dude, now. Yeah, I know. Everything's crazy. Super I've like crazy. swore off Broadway for the summer. Have you? I'm not going. Yeah. Not. Jeez. <laughs> I just can't. I can't do it. There's six thousand people down there in front of one bar. You just can't even move. I can't go to sleep unless I'm in Tootsie's for at least a couple yeah, hours. Yeah, now, <laughs> Dude, yeah, it's been, it's, it's crazy. Everything's just like wide open. Like I was in Florida and it was the most busy that like where I, where my family and I go, like is always like super, usually dead. Like, it's, yeah. like there's people there, but it's not like crazy that it was like the most busy it's ever been. And then you come back home here and it's just crazy here too. It's yeah. just. And everyone's Every, flooding here because theirs is like half open and ours is just Everyone just wants to party, open. bro. They're partying hard. Dude. Really hard. <laughs> it's just like ambulances at every corner down there too. People yeah, it's because dying on the streets. A bunch of idiots like to do violent things in Nashville these days. Like it's gotten crazy. Like when I first moved here, I swear it was like you didn't hear about too much happening. Yeah. There's stories like, did you hear about last year? Like something happened, but it was never like last week you know somebody got stabbed and killed and shot in the face like yeah. now i feel like every week there's some something's happening well i've heard like i mean just stories of people getting stabbed like sean and were telling me the story of that guy getting his neck slit or whatever i don't know it was yeah crazy yeah right downtown <laughs> yeah <laughs> come see nashville yeah come on cover your neck stay downtown it's dude I, I don't know. I don't like that kind of stuff. It was just like, that's one of the reasons I don't re go out as much as I used to, but it's wild, man. Just, you're probably, you probably feel okay though. You're probably like, I'm not usually too like terrified of things, but it's just like, I still don't want to be around that stuff. Cause you, you know would flip I mean? their ass. That's why I would try, I guess Yeah, you, you would <laughs> it's modest, super modest. So w you got any new music stuff coming up? Yeah. So we have a new single coming out very soon. Um, we just finished vocals with Josh couple days ago i think cool um, so that song will be out very soon um we kind of had a mix and i really wanted to change the whole yeah. vocals on it basically yeah. so we started from scratch almost with vocals so um yeah that'll be out i would say within like the next month probably sweet yeah what's we'll it called see. it's called piece of shit piece of shit yeah really i think we're just gonna call it pos though oh just, cool just to be classy i don't know nice, <laughs> nice. that's cool Did, who'd you write it with oh uh, it was a solo right solo right yeah I, i'd like moved here with just solo rights i mean i had like a bunch man i had you know 50 or 60 like solo rights and i was just kind of weeding through them and honestly the first song was kind of josh's idea because i just took him like you know five or six songs and i was like hey these are my top five i think and he was like that one's cool and i was like sure yeah well, let's go for it and so yeah it that's, worked out fine I it's mean, a cool song yeah thanks appreciate that i'm excited to hear piece of shit though yeah it's cool <laughs> it just talks about dudes and because we're pieces of shit sometimes, you know. Oh, is that what it's about? Yeah. I didn't know if it was the other way. I didn't know if we were calling someone a piece of shit. No. I mean, I guess we can call each other pieces of shit. Yeah. So <laughs> it's about like how guys are. Yeah. Just how we get wild. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. I'm excited to hear. I it. thought it was a cool concept, and it is. People seem to like it. So it is, and like when someone like reads that title, they're not going to immediately. They're probably going to think it's talking about someone else. Yeah. 
for sure. I like it. Yeah. It's cool. It's well, going to be an we'll anthem see. for some girls. Yeah, we'll see how it You're going to be like, oh my God, you hear Josh Jacobs' song talking about that <laughs> piece of shit? Yeah. Oh, man. I do hope you, so. Do you write most of your stuff by yourself? Like, has that been a change coming here or anything? Yeah, like I mean, that? definitely a change coming here because, like, I started, you know, doing the solo write thing. And then when I got here, I kind of, like, mingled with people for, like, three or four years. And then it was – that's what you're supposed to do when you come here. It's yeah. all, like, co-writes. So it's yeah. been tough. And, like, sometimes I get in the room, I'm just like, I got nothing for you guys. Like, I'll bring a title. I'll try mm-hmm. to bring something, you know. Yeah. And then I'm just sitting there, and they're, they kind of have their own image of it. You know, like, when you're sitting in a room, everyone has mm-hmm. their image of what that title is. Yeah. So I'm just like trying to grasp mine as they're like kind of changing it to right. theirs. They might be faster than me or something. So I yeah. feel like I do better in co or like solo rides, but yeah, I'm trying to branch out some. I feel like it's hard if you've done a bunch of solo rides to open yourself up to like being vulnerable in a co write with someone. Yeah. Especially if you don't know that person too. Yeah. It's always that weird stigma of just like going in a room and like, especially if you're writing like a love song, it's like, yeah, know, what's your love life? I don't know you. Right. At all. I know your name. That's about it. Right. It's hard to be like vulnerable with people and like put that trust in them that they're not going to like go out and talk about what your love likes. So yeah. <laughs> actually like, you know, how crappy it is. <laughs> <laughs> man, that guy. Piece of shit. Yeah. That really guy's a real sucked. piece of shit, man. <laughs> man. I wish I didn't ask. <laughs> no, that's, that's cool though, man. Yeah. Um, do you want to be like, is your end goal? Like you want to be like an artist or you want to be like a songwriter or, I've kind been of kind of bouncing around with it, honestly. I think I moved here with the thought of being an artist, and then mm-hmm. I kind of I kind of go back and forth sometimes because yeah. like being a songwriter is cool. Yeah, I mean you're in the shadows and just writing bangers. Right. So it's like why not do that? Yeah. No. It's but then cool. like you know I see other people that are doing the artist thing. And it's like well that looks like a lot of fun too. So yeah. and I, I mean I love singing and stuff. So yeah. Um, I think it'll probably be the artist thing for yeah. a while until I fizzle out. But that'd be cool. Hopefully it doesn't fizzle out. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. No. I mean. I think you got to at least uh, see see what happens with like if that's what you feel like you want to do like you have to go after it and see what the outcome's going to be otherwise you kind of regret it. Yeah, and that's like something I I always actually said I was like I don't want to regret coming here or like regret not trying. Right. You know what I mean? So like totally I'd rather die trying than not. Totally. You know? Yeah. Is that hundred percent support die that. trying or whatever? Yeah, man. <laughs> Get rich or die trying. <laughs> yeah. Um. Can you? Up the ears just a tad. Yeah, I was trying to turn it down for you because you were saying it was too much the other day. Tell me where you there's, like it. There's zero currently. Do you like it right there? I like it right there. That's you like, re- it? You like it right there? That feels really good. Tell me, how much do you like it right there? This is really, honestly, wow. This is good. Josh, close your eyes and talk into <laughs> your mic. Listen, listen hey, close hey. your eyes. Hey. Everyone close your eyes. Yeah. In a world far away. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was really good. What if we just like mid podcast, like we're in the middle of it and it's just like a short intermission to give people like an ASMR experience. Let's try it. Welcome to Jet Talks. Oh my God. <laughs> that made me uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, I felt like I was in your throat. <laughs> Whoa. Hey. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Well, honestly, that gym being kind of felt like you were in my throat. That hurt. Um, wow, that was a it's lot. It's getting weird here. That was a lot. So you served our country. I would like to say thank you. Appreciate for that. it, man. Thank Appreciate you. your service. And um, I can't like even imagine going through all of the stuff you've probably been through and um, for so many ungrateful people in this world. So I want to say huge thank you I and appreciate um, that. for protecting us all and uh putting your life on the line man i mean i always try to tell people it's like any other job it's just a different avenue I yeah mean, i don't know like yeah. i think about like nurses and doctors and stuff i mean they save people's lives too so yeah totally but totally they're not getting shot at but yeah i guess so yeah, yeah. <laughs> well in nashville they might be that's fair yeah <laughs> possibly yeah what uh what made you want to serve like what was like the so that story is kind of actually really strange. My, I was in college for a couple of years, um, studying architecture and I hated it. Just like, it was the worst. And I was like, I want to do something. And then my grandfather was actually in the air force. So I was like, I'm just going to be a legacy and like join the air force just like he did. And that'll be my like claim to fame. So I tried to join the air force and then I went to meet a recruiter one day. He told me to be there at noon on a Friday. 
I show up. He was like nowhere to be found. And there's happened to be a Navy guy there. And he's like, who are you looking for? I told him. And then he goes, well, have you ever thought about being in the Navy? And I said, no way. Like, I don't know anything about it. So he's like, well, just like read this brochure and we'll see how, like how things go. I'm like, okay, cool. So I take it home and like the first page is like Navy SEALs and it's like, it's like cool stuff. And the second page was like the SWIC guys and they drive boats. And I was like, whoa. I like driving, so I want to yeah. drive some boats. Yeah, cool. So I called him. I was like, I kind of want to be a SWIC. I was like, well, did you look at everything else? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what anything else is on there, but the boat driving thing looks cool. He's like, well, SEALs are like the cool one if you want to try that. And I was like, all right, yeah, sure. So it was just like a one night, I just decided to like try to be a SEAL, and then the ball just started rolling from there, and then it was just test after test, and it just worked. I don't know. It was wild. What was the... Uh the most difficult test that you took? Cause I'm sure that the, obviously the physical tests and stuff were hard, but I know there's also like mental things you have to. Yeah. I mean, it's just being like, I'm not a morning person by any means. So right. getting up every day mm -hmm. at four o'clock and immediately putting your clothes on and then jumping in the ocean and being in those clothes all day long for a year, it sucks. So it's just like that mental, it's like a slow mental build of like, there, it's just someone telling you, you suck every second of the day, basically. Wow. It, was this all in Virginia? Uh, so that was all in um, Coronado, California. Okay. Yeah. So, so that water was probably cold as shit. I mean, it's like f maybe like 50 or 60. I'm not exactly sure, yeah. but it gets pretty cold. Um, Definitely not warm. No, it's not warm by any means. Yeah. But I mean, it doesn't matter how warm the water is. They'll keep you in there until like hypothermia. So whatever that timetable would be. So if it's 70 degrees, they're going to keep you in longer because you have to reach that point of like, you're is that really, based really on like cool. the individual, like they know, or is it just like the whole group? Yeah. It's like the whole group. So, wow. Yeah. That's insane. Why That's is it cold. you suck every day? Like, they just want to, the they just want to break you down. Like every single day, they just want to break you down. Like that's what, that's their goal is like to get you to quit. So that's like the main thing is like trying to get you to quit. That's what they want like to do. So it's just them belittling you for ever until you actually quit. And then most guys, like I always had the thought process of like, Oh, this is going to end soon. So I just kind of laughed about it in my head. I would never laugh to their face because then it's way worse. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, they're just, they're just trying to get you to quit the whole time. So, man, what, a what was the most difficult physical test that you guys um, had to do? I mean, hell week's kind of a drag. It's kind of sucks. Kind so. of a drag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you like wake up on Sunday morning and then you're up till Friday afternoon. So you get to sleep on Wednesday and Thursday for like a couple hours on each one of those wow. days. Yeah. So I think the first Wednesday when we got to sleep, I was really sick. So I was like puking my brains out and I didn't get to sleep like hardly at all. So I slept like 45 minutes maybe. And then Thursday I may have slept just a little bit longer on that day, but it's only like four hours for the whole week. I'm pretty sure. Wow. Like total that you're allowed to sleep. That's insane. Yeah. And I, I don't, this might be a rumor, but they said you run like 200 miles too. I have no clue. Cause I was just like blackout mode, just going, but do you eat? Yeah, like so I mean, yeah, amount or yeah, they feed you a lot because they have to keep you going because you're awake right. the entire time. So yeah, I think mo or Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, I think you get like the MREs, like the little like meals in the bag or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So you eat those, and I think Wednesday morning is like your first like hot meal. You get to go to like eat at the Chow Hall and stuff. So okay, it's yeah. like the if you make it to that point, you're like cool, you know. Wow, dude, that's so insane. Yeah. Are you like hallucinating and stuff with how much Thursday night for sure? Yeah, dude. I can't, I'm, I mean, I've been up on like road trips that are like, like two days, you know yeah. what I mean? Which doesn't even touch that. And I wasn't doing anything physically mm -hmm. like super difficult other than like driving, but I felt like I was seeing shit. So I can't imagine like doing all this like physical stuff too. And having people probably make you feel like shit and swimming, I'm assuming oh, yeah. too a lot. Uh, I think that week, I don't think you swim that much that week, but you run a lot. So yeah. I know that first Sunday night, I think you run seven miles just to start it off. And it's like with the boats on your head the whole time. Oh, dude. I heard some crazy stuff about that. <laughs> yeah. The One, boats suck. Yeah. We have a, we have a friend that, um, he, he was in the Navy or is still, I'm not actually sure at this point, but he said that like when you guys are doing like the boat carry stuff, mm -hmm. that there is a guy who was slowing down and I guess I don't know is it the sergeants who are like yelling at you or the instructors yeah. instructors yeah. <clears throat> um I guess one of them went over and like pretty much kicked him in the back 
and like told him to come on and then the whole boat collapsed on everyone and like hit everyone in the head oh yeah i can see that <laughs> gnarly yeah that's so insane there's like usually six people under the boat so there's like two on each side like or three on each side you know yeah but the heaviest part's in the middle because it's like a rubber boat so it kind of like flops in the middle so it's like heaviest at that point so Jesus. everyone like kind of swaps out but you're like running the whole time so it's like a one two three and you like switch with people so we can like take turns underneath that spot and stuff so geez yeah you just carry the boats you ever get into the boat yeah so you got past the surf like the big waves now if you've ever been to like coronado or san diego but those waves are yeah. pretty big especially yeah. in the winter time i mean they're like seven eight feet like they're big jesus so you're like trying to paddle this stupid boat like super tired over this wave and it's just i mean guys get wiped out so oh much. i'm sure yeah i'm sure destroyed <laughs> my god is there ever like a like an I made it moment? Like, do they ever acknowledge like, all right, we're done making you feel like shit? Does that ever stop? So after Hell Week, the boats and the logs get like secured, so you never have to do them ever again. So if you make it past Hell Week, you never have to do the boat thing again. Um, but there's like checkpoints along the way, kind of deal. Like there's small checkpoints, like even making it the first phase, like starting day one of training. It's like really tough to get to that point. So there's just complete. It's a whole pipeline of just little tiny checkpoints the whole time. So. After you graduate Hell Week, it's like, okay, I did this. Then you get, like, a brown T-shirt instead of a white one. You're like, oh, I'm cool because I have a brown T-shirt. <laughs> oh, like, wow. hell yeah. And then you get to... Um, it's just brown naturally because it's that dirty. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then you get to, the, like, dive phase, and there's a big dive test. It's underwater for, like, 20 minutes, and it's, like, all these procedures. And it's just... You're basically fighting an instructor for 20 minutes, and he keeps taking your air away from you. And, like, oh. that's... If you pass that, then it's like, oh, I made it past this. And you get a G-Shock. So it's like you're kind of getting Gucci gear along the way. You get like a brown tee and a stupid little G-Shock. Like, <laughs> oh, I've made it now. Man. But you're so far from even graduating that it doesn't matter. Wow. So. What's like the final? like? So test? the final, I'm pretty sure the final training is like seer school, which is like where you get like captured, like a POW camp kind of stuff. Oh, okay. Um, it's, a, it's all mock stuff, but it's just like teaches you how to do all that stuff. So. Um, but after you graduate that you're done, you get your little trident and all that. So, so they, they capture you. Yes. Like tie you up. Like what, like walk me through that. Cause I, I yeah, have like no te- idea. <laughs> teaches you how to do what? Te- you're te- just like, teaches you all that stuff. Like, well, if you were like captured by terrorists, like okay. how to survive and not like, I don't know what I can actually say, but like <laughs> being like trying to get to like, come back home, I guess. You right. know what I mean? Like not die. And then right. also not like degrade your whole country okay. kind of deal. Man, that's yeah. crazy. Um, what like, at what point did you like start doing like the sniper stuff? Because that's like, explain like to me, like what you, what you did. So after I graduated, I went to a language school. And I learned a language called Pashto, which is like an Afghani language, Okay. which I can't speak it anymore, but, um, they sent us there and then I went straight to SEAL team two. Okay. So at SEAL team two, you do like your training and all that. And then you go on deployment. And then as soon as I got back from that deployment, I was able to go to a school cause like you're kind of like a new guy and they just, whatever, you're like the grunt of the team, you know? Yeah. Um, so for me, I didn't get my chance to go to sniper school before that. So I went right after I got back from my first deployment. So. Went to sniper school, and then I did two deployments after that as a sniper. Um, but, I mean, that schoolhouse, it's amazing. It's just like man camp, and then you're just learning everything about long range. And then, like, anything you could possibly think of with, like, a gun, you're learning at that school. It's oh, that's pretty cool. amazing, yeah. Do you have, like, a favorite gun? 300 win mag for sure. Yeah? Yeah. I don't even know what that looks like. Can we see what that looks like? Yeah, what's it called again? 300, 300, 300 win mag, yeah. 300 win daddy. Win daddy. That Win Dixie. Yeah. The Winchester Magnum. What's like your, uh, what's like your furthest like shot like on a target? Like first shot, hit it. Yeah. Um, I would say probably like nine fifty, maybe. Oh, okay. I've seen those down at the Walmart. <laughs> I don't know what brand that is. But... <laughs> okay. But the the three hundred Win Mag is just a round. So it's just like the bullet oh, gotcha. and the cartridge and all that. So Got gotcha. you. Is that what the, the gun that you're talking about looks like? Um, ours are a little different than that. You could probably type in Navy SEAL like 300 win mag. That one, I've seen that one down at the Walmart for, <laughs> for $199.88 plus tax. Yeah, Kmart had but no going bullets. out of sale. <laughs> no bullets, though. 
Everywhere is out of bullets. Yeah, so it's be something like this, basically. Oh, that. See, that looks so much cooler. <laughs> they don't have those down at the Walmart. Yeah. This those is those are cool Bass one. Pro, brother. <laughs> yeah, those are down at the Bass Pro. Actually, this one right here. That's sick. Yeah. So that's Dang. like the that's like the one we shot, but. Oh man. Yeah. Dude, that's really cool. So, yeah. What's your longest shot that you've hit? Like on uh, like, like one shot, I've probably hit like a nine fifty before, like nine hundred fifty meters. But like Dang. I've I've hit targets well over a mile. I've hit them like, it just takes maybe a couple shots. That's insane. To but me. at that distance, like you don't know what's coming. Yeah. Oh no no no. Yeah. Can. How do you, I can't even like fathom because like the furthest thing I've hit is probably like, I don't know, a telephone pole 80 yards out with a red rider. <laughs> so <laughs> like with a, like a sniper round at a mile out, are, are you aiming like so high above the target, like through the scope? I mean, yes, there's, through the scope. And then also if you're like the spotter, you're watching, I mean, I don't even know how many, maybe a hundred feet above the target and like, you'll see it arc. Way you aim there. that high above it? Not necessarily like aim up there, but you're aiming like pretty high above that target. And then if you have wind too, you might be aiming like I don't know. Can you even twenty see yards the to scope? the to the left? Can you even like see the target in the scope if you're doing that? It it might be really faint, you know especially at a mile. Yeah, it's Cause just like, like a little blur down there. Yeah, because like if your target's here and you're aiming up here with the scope, you probably can't see it unless it's in like in the bottom. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You can still see it because in that scope, it's just like you have all your tick marks and all that stuff. Yeah. So like you're just putting it on one of those, and usually you'll dial, oh. like on the scope, it has a little dial yeah. on top. So you dial that to what you actually need to hit, yeah. and then you can use that center of that crosshair on the scope. Wow. But the, the gun still canted like this. You're just dialing that scope down. That's crazy. Yeah. Damn. I'd like to see me try to do that, not knowing <laughs> how to do it. It'd be insane. Be popping popping shots off at airplanes on accident i know i've been meaning to go down the moons and shoot some long distance yeah i think I, we could do it down there we should absolutely go do that i think moon would love that he'd be like here's 35 pounds of terror i go shoot that <laughs> shoot shoot my dog i don't yeah. like the dog no more i got this new truck going to give her a shot yeah man take it it's yours here's the keys to the house take it man hey listen i got an idea you own my house now <laughs> moon's like that nice <laughs> Here's a th here's food for thought. You can have my here's you know what here's the house. You own the town of Home Mall now. <laughs> Love you. He's like literally like that though. Like he just hey so give nice. you anything. Oh, dude. absolutely. I know. Anything. I know. What That's why we guy. were hanging out with him last night. He's like, I told Jed about you, man. He's like, I thought I thought maybe you could be on there. He's like, you probably got a story or two. Yeah. I was like I mean, everyone's got stories. I was like, I'd rather hear your stories twenty more times than my stories. I love his stories. They're oh great. yeah. Oh yeah. They're there's something else we He's, gotta get him back oh yeah he'll he'll be back i think it'd be fun to do like a little group one have him and a couple other people or something something different but uh speaking of stories you got any cool stories that you can share <laughs> that you want to share um, um about like military stuff i guess yeah i feel like so like my goal for this is like i'm not super educated on everything about the military okay um, I want to understand more, but I'm hoping that by you telling me and educating me some on some of the stuff that some people else, like more people can learn yeah. more about it, have more respect for it, and you know understand that how many how much sacrifice slash bravery it takes for you guys to go do the kind of stuff. Yeah, that I got you. Did. I mean, if, if we just talked about like actually being like what I was, I mean, it was, the odds were completely against you, obviously. Like, that's what they always say. It's like the hardest thing to try to do. And when I started first phase, I think there was 256 of us. And then a year later, there was only seven of us original 256. So it's like, Shit. it's pretty tough. You know what I mean? So like you have to be, I, I think luck was a lot like on my side a lot. Like Are I wasn't training. There's 250 people in training or yeah, actually like, on the field, like start training. Got you. Yeah, okay. like when you try to be like a seal. So wow, there was seven of us originals that like ended up graduating with that same class. Only seven. Yeah. That's insane. But I mean, a lot of those guys, they either get hurt. So they get rolled to the, like the class behind them or something to like heal mm. or they quit. I mean, yeah. but I mean, even hell week was like, I mean, you lose like 70, 80 people just in that one week. You yeah. Know, it's pretty crazy. So, wow. Um, and then just like, once you're at a team, like you think it's all gravy, but I mean, you're gone so much. And like that, that was like one of the main turnoffs for me toward the end. I mean, I love it. Don't get me wrong by any means, but 
you're just gone so much. You miss like your family, you miss holidays, you miss everything. So every other year I was gone for, um, Halloween, my birthday, Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's day, like all those big holidays, you know, like in the fall. So yeah. basically from November to like May I was gone. Mm-hmm. So you just like miss all those. And then even like when I was a sniper instructor, I mean, you're gone 200 days out of the year, like you're traveling. Wow. And then when you're at a team, you're probably gone that much too. And then you deploy after that for six, seven months. So it's a lot. Like you're gone all the time, but I mean, they rotate you. So they, yeah. try, they try to do their best, but like, they're still trying to train you as much as they possibly can. For so, sure. I mean, that's why I mean, my, my buddies are all still in, so they're just still crushing it. And I mean, I love them for it. And I love the guys that have gone to like damn neck and like done the bigger things, you know, it's really cool. So, um, but yeah, it's cool. a lot. <laughs> yeah. Where did you deploy? Um, so my first deployment was in Afghanistan and then I was in Colombia, bounce around there. And then I was in Panama, the country of Panama on my third one. I feel like I know a little bit about Colombia just from watching, uh, Narcos. Like narcos. Yeah. <laughs> Probably don't know anything, but I feel like I got a little bit of education from Narcos. Oh, I feel like I've seen a lot of that narco stuff down there. Really? It's wild, dude. Like, is it as crazy as what that show made it kind of seem like? Absolutely. Really? I mean, I've seen some weird stuff, like, in front of grocery stores down there. Just, like, it's weird. Like, like Walmart weird? <laughs> like, way worse than Walmart. It's There's like, no way. I'm it, sorry. No. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm sorry. I don't, you got to tell me what you saw now because I don't, like... I've seen some, man, I've seen some like peach fuzz rolling out of butt cracks walking into Walmart. I've seen like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nothing in Columbia I've seen, touches I've that. I've seen people with like the wrong Crocs on wearing their pajamas com- rolling out of the RV with the morning wood going into Walmart. <laughs> you, I'm, this is like. We're on two different wavelengths of weird right now. Are we talking, are we, are, so we're talking like drug weird? I'm talking like. like death and like drugs weird okay yeah we have different weirds <laughs> so on a scale of one to walmart how weird yeah i would say almost a half wall <laughs> oh my god we got a half wall <laughs> we're hitting half wall in columbia brother <laughs> so uh, so like what okay. so i would say it was the third week we were there yeah. we were walking to the grocery store and we're like walking by and there's this whole group of people and i'm just like what's everybody looking at? Cause they're looking at the sidewalk, like down on the sidewalk. There's all these kids and like, it was just a whole group of people. I'm mm-hmm. just like, what is this? Well, I like walk up and there's a dude laying on the sidewalk who had been like executed basically like on the sidewalk. And just he's on just, the sidewalk. And he's just laying there. Everyone's staring at him. It was like real weird. And we're just like, what's going on? Cause like it's a crime scene. You know what yeah. I mean? So like we called back and like, Hey, there's like crime here. Like this is really weird. While we're standing there, this taxi rolls up, just a normal taxi, rolls up, grabs the dude really quick, throws him in the back seat, like bleeding everywhere, and then they just take off. And that was just a normal day. Damn. Like man. a Tuesday in Columbia. He must have called that cab before he got <laughs> shot. <laughs> yes. They had his picture too, I'm sure. That's a actually really good cab service if dude. if if they're doing their job, but I feel like they've they weren't, were they? No. They weren't the good guys. Probably, Probably not. not. <laughs> that's crazy though. That's that's literally like the show. Right? Oh yeah. Damn. Well, there was also like up the street. So we're only allowed to go a certain distance when we go on deployment. Like there's red zones. You're not supposed to go in because it's like a little. I don't know. Like you're not supposed to go there. It's like dangerous. So there's actually a documentary somewhere on YouTube, but it's about like the chop shops is what they call them. They're mm-hmm. little huts that are like over the water, but like you'll like hear screams at night, and like people are like getting like chopped alive. No. He's, yes, it's wild. For what though? Like it's Who just knows? like I, I mean I don't. It's know. like they have like is it like gang beef? Probably, probably like gang beef and just like drug cartel stuff. I don't know, but that's terrifying. But like from the restaurants and stuff, you could see those little huts like down in the water. I mean, they're right down the street from us. And I'm guessing that like the authorities there don't really do anything about this stuff. I don't think they can. Or they can they're they don't have the power. Yeah. The, 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 the police carry like 1960 revolvers Damn. and like a leather sheath. Like that's their firepower. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got like cartels rolling around with like armored trucks. You know, it's just like, wow. Bomb. So that's crazy. Jesus. So yeah. the cartel and stuff still like at large down there and everything. I'm sure. I would assume so. Yeah. That's so I don't wild. think, I don't think anyone can stop those guys. No. There's too I much mean, money and too much insane money. Guys. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. How would you compare that to then like like the experience of being there and seeing their culture um, compared to being in Afghanistan? It's definitely a lot more like 
modern, I guess, obviously in Colombia, you know, in Afghanistan, I mean, it's just dirt streets. And like, I had this weird realization one morning, we were like doing this like overwatch thing and we wake up with the sun or we were already up, but these kids came out and like, they just kicked a soccer ball. And like, that was what they started their day with, like in the street. And I was like, you don't know anything other than this. Like wow. they don't have electricity. They don't have power, like nothing. They have cars. It's about it. So it's wow. like, that's what they start their day with. Just kicking a soccer ball. Like that's what you're going to do for the rest of your life. It's like wild to think about. Jeez. Yeah. And maybe one of them is going to go like super pro someday. Probably. If, if they keep at it. Maybe. Every day. Was it hot as shit there? It looks like it's like the hottest place <laughs> in the world. <laughs> it was actually cold as shit. It was No way. Yes. Because we were up at like 5,000, 6,000 feet. Okay. So we were there in the winter time too. So it was yeah. like brutally cold. So I was like bundled up, like completely bundled up. Really? Yeah. I see. I would have totally thought the opposite, but I no. guess the elevation. I think when we first got there, maybe like, or actually when we were leaving, it was like getting kind of warm, like getting hot out. But yeah. I think it's just so drastic, like the, the weather change. I don't know, but it was really cold. It was snowing when I was there. Right. Yeah. When you would have to do stuff like by yourself, <laughs> were you ever just like freaking out or would, after all the training, did you have like your emotions like more intact? You know what I mean? I think they beat into you so much that like we, you train, like I said, you train 200 days out of the year, basically. So yeah. you're training so much that when you get over there, you have to like check yourself and say, this is not training. If that makes sense. Cause you're oh, so okay. immune to like hearing gunshots and all this stuff. It's like, Oh, whatever. Like you right. don't care anymore. Cause you've heard it so much like right. traveling and training. So I never really had like a big realization while I was over there, but I mean, there was some definitely close calls and stuff over there that were like, okay, once you step back and like you're back in your bed, you're like, okay, that was weird. And I should have been more cautious probably like yeah. what I was doing. So it's probably good though. Cause it trains like fight or flight. Like it gets rid of it almost. Right. Yeah. It's almost like scared. muscle memory at that point. Like mm-hmm. if you could equate that to like a brain thing, you know what I mean? So, wow. Yeah. Did you see any camel spiders? Dude. I don't, I don't think I did. I don't think we had any of those. Did you there. ride any camels? I don't think I saw any camels. I ran over a bunch of goats one time though. <laughs> No. Yeah, it was wild. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> Sorry, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but you, how? Why? Well, because they're like herding sheep, and then um, I was in the front vehicle, and I had a. I mean, we hit those trucks are like thirty two thousand pounds. They're huge, yeah. and yeah. you're rolling at like forty miles an hour, fifty yeah. miles an hour, and I, there's a whole flock of sheep. I don't know if that's what you call them, but they're walking across the road, and, and you I can't looked, stop. My, I looked at my lieutenant. And he goes, "Don't stop." And I was a new guy. I was like fresh in the teams. I was like, okay. So I just floor it. And it was just like, bo, 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 bo. no run over, way. Run over all these sheep. And then I look kind of out the side window and the guy's just like, you just ran over all my sheep, dude. But mind you, there's like seven trucks behind me. So all the other sheep that were walking across, I mean, they're just done. We so. need to have a moment to reflect on how <laughs> stupid these sheep are. They have a military vehicle coming at them. They're not, they didn't even try to move. No, I mean, there's sheep. I don't know. Are they that dumb? Sheep are very dumb. I guess I didn't realize. That's why that. the insult is like you're a sheep. Like, oh, you're a sheep for like buying into whatever. Wow, conspiracy theories, whatever. That makes sense. There you go. Can you imagine? It's an educational <laughs> podcast. I know that like, hopefully, that most humans' brains are developed more than sheep. But can you imagine being in the road, and there's like how many probably? I mean, there's probably a flock of like forty of them. How many vehicles were you with though? I think seven or eight. And that's probably loud coming oh yeah i mean they're like semi trucks basically yeah you're gonna stand there for a semi truck no unless you're a sheep they've probably never seen one before the thing is bringing them food they're like like whoa (laughs) here it comes like (laughs) you can't stop you can't stop because of safety right like your majority of the time yeah i mean i've i've heard stories like they put explosives in sheep and stuff you know i mean i don't know but yeah they can do anything they can put explosives in anything these days it's wild have you ever found an explosive in something crazy? I have. There's actually one really weird story. It was like my come to Jesus story. And it was like, we got out, we were in this intersection. We heard a bunch of gun like shots. We were waiting for like all of our other trucks to get there. So we're like kind of standing in this intersection. We go out, we were, I think we were in a gunfight for, I don't know how long, but we came back and there was a pot of tea on the side of this like so we did like a big loop so we're in this intersection came around fought for a little bit and then we came back around but there was a like a warm pot of tea like sitting next to this wall and then there was like a light switch thing over there 
I'm like, that's so weird. And the tea was still warm, but there's no one there. And then there was like a hole through this giant wall that looked across this field into that intersection. Long story short, there was a like a wire on that like light switch thing or whatever it was. And they followed it. And it was like, I don't know exactly how big, but it was like 100 to 200 pounds of like stuff underneath that intersection. No that way. That we were standing in. So whatever that switch, it didn't work while we were there. Oh, my gosh. So then once we came around, they took off because they couldn't get their whatever to work, their, igni- their igniter or whatever it was. Dang. But the our EOD guys like literally dug that up to that intersection where we were standing earlier. And then we found like all this explosives under like in the intersection. Oh my God. Yeah. So that was my like coming to Jesus. For I'm sure. alive, man. <laughs> wow. Here we are. So. Yeah. Cause if that thing would have went off, it would have been, Oh um, yeah. So they actually set it off cause we always like take care of it, but they like set it off and I mean, it shook the trucks and those trucks are huge, you know, and then we wow. parked them way far away too. Jeez. Wild stuff, man. Dude, that's insane. Yeah. How often does that stuff happen? Like, how often were there instances where you're like, well, could have been that. Well, could have been that. Well, that could have done it too. I mean, quite a bit over there. I mean, so we got there. It wasn't really like, they weren't too, they weren't fighting. They call it like fighting season over there. And like, they start like when it's warm out. Because in the wintertime, most of them like head out and go somewhere else for, you know, go to Florida for the summer. So they came back and then it was, I want to say there was one other instance that we found like an IED, like in a, it was actually in a step, like a sidewalk step. And we kept driving back there all day. And then the last one, I was standing with my buddy in the intersection and these um, Afghani police were coming to like meet up with us. And this like little explosion went off like for, right by their truck. But we had been driving by there all day and it was basically a cell phone like explosive setting mm. that was supposed to set off this grenade or something that was next to like a missile or like a projectile kind of deal. And it like basically went low order, which means it doesn't blow up. Like it was just old or something Hmm. um, or didn't have good contact or something along those lines. But the police like went back, dug it up. And I was, I mean, I watched it happen. I was like 50 yards from it maybe. And I watched it and I was like, Oh, that was weird. And then they dug it up. And then (laughs) these idiots are like carrying it to us. They're like, Hey, we found it. And we're like, we don't want that. Get away from us. Like (laughs) take it somewhere else, please. But that was one of those times too. It was like, we had been driving by there all day long and like that would have taken out a truck for sure. Oh you know? yeah, for sure. I mean, they're like this long and they're like this big around. That's the things that guys like drop in the tube and it yeah, matches. those are like the mortars, but yeah. it's, they have mortars that are that size though, for sure. Like, Dang. like one Oh somethings, but yeah. Yeah, man. That's crazy. What would Some be weird like, shit, man. <laughs> what would be, I mean, I feel like there's so many people that don't understand what you guys go through. What would be like something that you wish more people understood about like people who serve? Like, um, I think uh, this may be very controversial, but like thinking that every single person that was in the military is like messed up in the head when they get back. Cause a lot of people aren't. So like you see a lot of these like movies and stuff and they make military people look crazy. Like, when they get back, they're, like, crazy. And, like, I'm not saying that some people have really serious issues. Like, they do. And I respect those people, and I want to help those kind of people. But, like, not everyone's crazy. And I hear, like, a lot of people are, like, what are you, like, really, like, traumatized from? I'm, like, no. I'm, like, I'm okay. Like, I'm good. But, like, just these movies make people seem that they're right. all just, they go crazy. As soon as they go over to Afghanistan or Iraq, they're crazy. Right. And, like, even people that have seen crazy stuff, I mean, they deal with it their own way. Yeah. But they're not all, like the movies you know what i mean yeah so i think that's like my one thing i don't really have anything else right what oh, was cool. that like for you like where f- gunfire and explosions and everything had become normal what was it like coming back stateside to not that in your everyday life um i don't know if i've had like any like real moments of that like at all i mean definitely there's times where i like here's a huge example i was at live oak one night and they were shooting guns in the street. Like someone was mad and was shooting guns. And like, for me, I was just sitting there, but everyone else like jumped under the tables. I don't know. Joel, were you there that night? Oh yeah. He was walking down the street, I think. But I was just like, for me, I was just sitting there like, Oh, this is normal. They were like, just shooting in the street. I think they got kicked out of one of the other clubs right down the street from live Oak. That's fair. And yeah. threw a fit by shooting threw a fit and like drove back by and were like shooting guns in the air. And like, people were getting under the tables and stuff. And I was just like, Oh, well, if it hits me, it hits me, I guess. Like I can't stop it. I can't stop a bullet. You know what I mean? So Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> That's Nashville. That's insane. Back to Nashville. 
I don't I don't know when Nash I mean I'm sure that they try to do some things to like stop this stuff but I feel like there could be more done and I don't know what it is but I don't know kind of bad yeah it's kind of bad still a great city don't, don't get me wrong yeah oh there's yeah <laughs> still I, love this place the, what would, what's like one of your favorite parts about Nashville um I mean, I've always loved live music, so just literally being able to go to writer's rounds because I yeah. love going to writer's rounds. And right. I don't really care who's playing. I just like hearing people play. And right. Just being raw, you know what I mean? Like yeah. playing a guitar and just singing. I think it's great. Yeah. So That is cool. I think that's like my favorite thing. Yeah. And then the food's really good, which I need to explore more. You I got a do. spot that's like your spot? I tell you, last night I had the best burger of my life probably. Where? Um, was it Tennessee Brew Works? Tennessee Brew Works. The really? burger there. It's probably my top five burger in the world, and I would definitely the best in Nashville. No way. And I will stamp I that. need to try that. Yeah, it's good. I heard about some pretzel burger in town the other day that's apparently insane. I don't know where it's served. Do you know where, do you know where it's served? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to explore more, man. I heard that that burger's good, too. I haven't tried Tennessee Brew Works, though. That'd be something I'd be down yeah. for. I had until I last night. Burger. It was good, though. Yeah. What a... What'd you get on it? I think it, I just got bacon on it. I think it comes with everything else. I'm it's, just like, I want this burger. The hard it sounds, it's good. It sounds fire. But the, fry, the fries make it good too. Oh, yeah. I, that's what I did. I did put fries on the burger. So it's bacon and fries. Yeah. I'm surprised more places don't just do that or offer that because it's great. I know they should. Yeah, for sure. Totally. And those, bur- those fries are good too. Like real good. Yeah. yeah. What kind? They're like the, the skinny fries. Oh, but they're Steak seasoned fries. like good. Those are. Where is Tennessee Brew Works? I can't even think. Okay. Damn. I need to try that. It's a brewery, right? Like an actual brewery. Yeah. That's cool. What was food like abroad? Like, you get to get any local stuff when you guys were in Afghanistan or in uh, Colombia or anything? <laughs> yeah. Actually, in Afghanistan, we had a dude that worked right outside our gate. His name was Naki Bula, and he would make us pizza. He, like, made a stove. You know, like the wood fire or the, like, the brick fire brick stove? stove? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he, like, made it out of, like, mud. It was, like, a round thing inside. But he would, like, slap the dough on the inside of the oven and just make these pizzas for us for three bucks. No and way. And he'd put ham and, like, pepperonis on it, and it was so good. Really? Yeah, it was amazing. That's I had a Naki awesome. Bula pizza every day, probably. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we got good stuff, and we had, like, steak sometimes and um i mean just like normal like military chow food i don't know if you like know what that is but it's just i mean it's, it's everything they might have like tacos one night or something like that you know right but columbia is really good um i was gonna say i bet they got some yeah fire food in enchiladas Columbia. and stuff over there man it's so good yeah there's some like i mean there's normal stuff over there too it's like papa john's like if you want papa john's delivered to your door you just call them and they'll come and bring it yeah in columbia yeah that's what's up. Yeah, it's cool. Is there Columbia and Iraq, or is there um, Papa John's in Iraq? Is there any kind of like there chain? might be? Well, I know in Afghanistan at Bagram Base, there was a Popeyes chicken. There was a Wendy's, I think it was. There's like Subways on all the bases too. Oh wow! So you have like normal food over there. Okay. If you don't want to eat the, like the chow food, but usually the in the chow halls is pretty good. Really? Yeah. It's like a buffet basically. Nice. Like whatever. You I want. love buffets, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Just being able to make your plate with whatever you want yeah they have this thing it's, it's like you eat at midnight and they have like it's basically like dinner food mixed with like breakfast food so in the middle of the night you choose what you want it's like which side of midnight are you on you know yeah <laughs> i might like get them both i might just live right at midnight i don't know yeah that actually sounds like a great song what side of, what side of midnight are you on <laughs> it's pretty good yeah you should write it i will let me write that down right write it down yeah mental <laughs> that's the title you bring to the next right yeah yeah <laughs> Hey, do you spend time off base much in either spot? Um, Columbia for sure. Yeah. Um, we explored a little bit. Um, I lived in Panama too. That's like Miami of central America, basically Panama. Yeah. Panama city, Panama. That's where I live. I live like right off the canal basically up there. Okay. Um, but we had four houses on a golf course up there. So like our backyard had like this big pool, not like an infinity pool, but it was pretty close to like an infinity pool. It It was so Gucci up there. The Navy um, sounds sick. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll never get this the rest of my life. But um, yeah, it was cool. And then, I mean, we'd go into town. They had like a hard rock cafe and stuff. Like, no way. Yeah, you can go get lunch so or like go do whatever you want. Stuff. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. What was the love like 
love life like over in uh, Colombia? And Colombia is not very good, brother. No, no, <laughs> no lovers over there. I was in so the place we lived was really, really. It's like if I could equate it to a city. Yeah, it's like downtown Detroit. Okay, so it wasn't like my cup of tea, really. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, there's like clubs and all that stuff there. I think so. Yeah, we're not allowed to drink on deployment, like at all. Like, right. I think the rest of the Navy they're allowed to, um, but like our profession, like we're not allowed to drink, like Probably. at all. Probably best. Pretty smart, yeah. Yeah. So. Man. What's like, have you ever like been lost? I've always wondered like, so you would probably have to go off on your own at some points, right? Like off base? Yeah. Not like alone. Not no. like alone alone? No, we'd never go alone. I mean, I'm in like small man groups for sure, yeah. but you're never lost. How do you know if you're in a red zone? You know, you're saying, is it like you have like a thing that shows you? Yeah, it's like a map. I mean, you have GPS a map. GPS vibes? Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's just, the you're living area, in the don't city. Don't go. Yeah, basically. Like, okay. don't go past, like, 33rd Street or whatever. Gotcha. You know what I mean, so. Okay. Yeah. Now I know. It's like Broadway. Like, Broadway's a red zone. Broadway. <laughs> stay Broadway away from that all zone. summer. Yeah. You'll be good. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, what, what did you expect Nashville to be like when you came here? Especially with the music stuff. Um, I didn't really have any ex- expectations. I didn't, I mean, I wanted to play music for sure, mm-hmm. um, and see like how the songwriting thing would go. Because I've been coming here since like 2017, and since I worked in Indiana, I could just drive down on the weekends all the time. So I would yeah. do that a lot and do songwrites and stuff. And um, I worked with – I did a couple co-writes, and I was like trying to learn the whole thing. And I had a song called The Radio Plays, and the Tootin' Brothers, I don't know if you know them or not, but they're brothers here in Nashville, and they were like, hey, we really like this song. We want to cut it. So they put it on their album. And I was like, oh, well, this might be like plausible that I can like actually be a songwriter here. So yeah. um, moving here, I just wanted to be, or I just wanted to like see if, I just want to try my hand at it basically. You know what right. I mean? So I don't really have any expectations of being like, I'm going to be a star in a year. You know what I mean? Like right. that's clearly not going to happen. So I just. Never know. I just wanted to like play by ear and just, I think that's, I've done a pretty good job of just kind of staying in my own lane a little bit and just kind of trying to figure it out and especially like learning from everyone, you know, that's here yeah. already. So totally. That's like the main thing is just learning. And I want to learn all the ins and outs, you know, like if yeah. I meet someone who does a certain job, I'm like, Hey, can you like tell me about it? I just want to know like yeah. what you do that way. I'm not like stupid down the road and like making mistakes, you know what totally. I mean? So, um, but with the whole music thing, I just wanted to, I mean, like, I want to be an artist someday, probably. That's, like, yeah. my goal right now. If yeah. it changes, I want to be a songwriter, then whatever. But just learning from other people and, like, kind of yeah. watching them, too, you know, so. Dude, it could pop off in a year. I mean, I've seen it with so many people here that it just takes one song. Yeah. And your dream will come true. And next thing you know, you're playing giant shows. And you look back at yourself three years ago, and you're like, oh, my God, like, sitting like this like yeah i don't know if i like if this is what i'm gonna do or whatever like i've seen that so many times and who knows like maybe you'll pop off in this next year yeah i mean we hope completely so. possible yeah. and then you hear the other stories it's like well i've been here 13 years and yeah. i just got my pub deal i'm like okay yeah well is that what i have to look forward to or is it did yeah. it happen sooner yeah so it's like yeah and i don't think it ever no there's no template here clearly like mm-hmm. not one single template yeah you know so um yeah, just playing it by ear. Got to like pray about it and kind of see what cards God deals you here. I mean, a lot of times I see people um, with like a super strong expectation, and then once they get to Nashville, they're kind of shocked with how much work it actually takes. Oh yeah, um, there's the rarity of people that have had extreme success very early on that, that you know someone just heard them and believed in them right off the bat. But most of the time, you do hear about it being you know, many, many years before yeah. everything popped off. But regardless, if it takes 10 years to end up doing something that you love and you get to re- live the rest of your life doing that, I think it's totally worth it. Yeah. And that's like what I've seen. It's like people that work really hard. Yeah. I mean, they're just crushing it. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, that's the only like common factor with all these people. If you yeah. work hard, you're probably going to get something. Yeah. It might not be like, you might not be the biggest thing in the entire world, but like you're going to be successful for sure. In That's what way. I always said. I was like, I don't really care to be like famous by any means. Yeah. I just want to be successful. Right. And now I kind of understand like with fans, you are famous. So it's kind of like goes hand in hand, but like mm-hmm. just being successful is like all I really care about, you know? Right. So is there like anyone that you like really have looked up to artist wise? Um, 
you know, like big influences in your life? Um, I mean, as far as like country singers, like back in the day, I'd look up to you. Like if I were to base myself off people like that, I want to kind of be like, I, I love Eric Church's vibe back in the day, you know, like oh, yeah. even now he's just so in his own lane, mm-hmm. but he's just so good. Like yeah. just insane. Right. But I mean, even like looking at Sean, you know, I see him all the time. It's just like, he works so hard and like, it's just, it's a good, um, influence to like have around me. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, Cause like I see how hard he works and it's just like, that's what I need to be doing. So right. it's, it's great to like be close to that, you know? Yeah. So. I don't, I don't really know anyone that works harder than Sean. I really don't. Oh yeah. Especially I mean, in music. Yeah, for sure. He's a, he's a prime example of a uh, hardworking corn fed mule boy <laughs> oh, from Sean Kentucky. Deere, you know? Yeah. But uh, yeah, he works hard, man. It's just like, it's good to just, be influenced by that for sure. Yeah. You know, so for sure. And it's good to surround yourself with people doing that because I've been here for six years and I've had phases of my life here where I've been around people hustling mm-hmm. and I noticed that it makes me hustle, but I've been around people that are okay with just being like kind of sitting back and waiting for stuff to happen. Yeah. And I start noticing that the hustles kind of goes away and I start kind of thinking like that just from being surrounded by people like that. Yeah. So it's definitely good to surround yourself with people that are going to keep you motivated and hold you accountable for your own goals and yeah. stuff. The motivation's the key thing here, I feel like, because mm-hmm. this town sweeps you in. It's like, well, I just want to go out every single night and party. Mm-hmm. But if you're not doing work on the side, then you're probably not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So I've had to like really find that balance. You know what I mean? Because yeah. this town's tough. I mean, yeah. it's like you have, like, I'm sure you have a thousand friends here, and it's just like they all have something going on mm-hmm. every single day all hours of the day. So just like finding your time to just sit back and just really work hard. Yep. That way you can enjoy it here, here and there at night, you know, totally. Would you say that you've noticed, cause this is something I noticed that like it's, it is though important, especially if you're new in Nashville to go out and socialize and meet these people. Like you could say it's partying, but like going out to some of these bars and these rounds and having a few drinks and talking to people, in my opinion is almost as valuable as like just sitting in your room and writing. I mean, just because you don't know who you're going to meet, you don't know, you know, how they could help you if they would want to help you or the relationship that you might build with them, you know, down the road, because most of my friends here that are doing big things, I've met them like out and about or like a house party or something like that. I agree. I I thought the whole networking thing was just a joke. Like it's an excuse to party, but it's so real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you don't have to go out and get, you know, trashed every right. single night. Yeah. But meeting people, I mean, that's how I've met majority of the people. And it's mm-hmm. just like Josh will take me out to meet someone and that person meets me, like introduce me to someone else, and then it's just that ball just rolls. It just snowballs. You yeah. know what I mean? So totally. I think for sure. I mean, I've met so many people out in just the year I've been here. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Yeah. The amount of people that I've met and it's just I don't know. I think it's I think it's a good sign for sure. Yeah. But we'll see how it plays out. You yeah, know? man. Well hopefully someday we'll look back on this video and uh, you're selling out arenas or we're sitting in your mansion in Franklin drinking cold beer being like, damn, that was a good song. You wrote. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Heck yeah. I can't wait. Well, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate you being a guest on, uh, on my podcast. Thanks um, for having me again. Thank you for your service and for filling us in a little bit on the military background. And um, it's cool to hear, you know, your side and stories and, hopefully as we get to know each other more, you can tell me more things. Cause I, I want to be more educated on it so that I can have more appreciation because I feel like the more, you know, about a certain thing, the more you can actually appreciate it. So I appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank, man. thank you for having me. All right, this is fun. All right. You guys check out his music. It's coming out. Um, when is it coming out? I don't have a, I don't have a date yet, but it'll be soon within the next month and a half. Probably. All right, cool. Sweet. Well, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in to Jed talks.